Wondering Mike's crew, how are you guys? I am sitting here alone with nobody here, but I have two guests that are going to come into the room in a couple minutes, and we're going to talk about the Olympics. Um, <laughs> I actually laughed when we went live. Um, I have my screen door open with my cat outside, and I'm really, really worried about Tick bringing me a lizard during the show. I just want you guys to know if I start screaming a little or you know looking around and there's something going on i'm going to turn it to jules and sarah and i'm going to let those guys take the show while i go ahead and get the lizard out of my house so i'm just letting you know um happy what is today wednesday today's wednesday that's right it's show day i already have a comment coming in look at who it is it's janice hi janice everybody knows she's always the first to comment which i love my mama for supporting me um we're going to talk about the Olympics today, you guys. Not not in depth and into, oh, this, that, this. We're just going to talk about how we all feel about actually having the Olympics this year. I'm a huge Olympics fan. I mean, I every year it's on, I try to watch as much as I can. I try to record it. I have duplicated recordings. Um, I love it. I think it's great to support our country, but I love seeing the underdog. I love seeing the countries that are coming out of nowhere, that all of a sudden somebody wins a gold because they jumped over a hurdle faster than the person that jumped over a hurdle next to them. Um, I love it. So, but I did have mixed feelings this year and I, I put out a poll, um, I think last week to talk about it so I could get kind of a starting point. And I was surprised at actually some of the results. So, um, we'll go over those a little bit. We'll talk about Simone Biles, of course, because that was a big deal. Um, uh, the Norwegian, I think it's, what is it? Handball team, um, and pink and how they all got related into this, you know, into the story. So, we're going to talk about that, but I'm going to bring on my two guests. They're sitting in the green room right now. I can see both of them looking down their phones, wondering when the hell I'm going to put them in. So we're going to put them in right now. So let's go ahead and bring in, we all know her. We all love her. She is my girlfriend, Sarah. Hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. I know you're laughing. I can see you laughing in the green room. Totally. I can see, and actually Jules is clapping in the green room, so that's good. Um <laughs> I know you hate being on camera, but you're getting better at it. And after, and people are asking for you. So you know what? You need to be my little sidekick. I'm already your sidekick. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, Ma, Janice says hi, by the way. Hi. Hi, Janice. <laughs> and your camera's working great right now. She's downloading some stuff. And I got really worried, you guys, when we first started. I was like, um, you're pixelating. And every time you have a drink in your hand, you're like, R -r -r, and it's showing like the pixelations. But you sound great. You look good. Um, sorry, you couldn't be here. Sarah is recovering from a little bit of a surgery thing right now. And, um, it's just better that, you know, she's at her house. I'm here. It's, it's, it's just better for her healing. Um, and probably I'd roll over and hit her in the stomach and then, you know, she'd smack me. So yeah. See, um, are you ready to talk about the Olympics? Am I ever? <laughs> no, I don't even watch them. I was just going to say, let's be honest and let's be honest. Um, you don't watch the Olympics. You've only watched it because I've asked you to a couple times, which is fine. Yes, but that's not necessarily true. I do watch it on occasion. Just okay. about cable, it's not as easy. So, oh, so do they have um, channels on like Hulu and, and all the other ones, the subscription channels to watch the Olympics? Only if I use your login for DirecTV. Um, I really hope DirecTV is not listening right now. Um, yeah. So you can, you, so, but other than that, there's no other way of watching it. So they didn't add it to any subscriptions this year. Not that I could find. Well, I mean, if somebody knows, let us know. Cause yeah, I mean, that's good. I mean, with the it's world going, with the world going to subscription, the people trying to get out of cable, which I'm trying to get out of cable just because I don't like paying 180 bucks a month. Um, you would think that hopefully, obviously this is the first year, maybe they would think of a way to add it to the streams but I have a feeling they're going to maybe do money. Kind of like the NFL. You know how the NFL has a channel. But that's $300, almost $400 a year. Maybe they can just do a package for the Olympics for the two-week period and have it be $39.99. I would pay $39.99 to watch the Olympics. There is an Olympics channel. Okay. But it doesn't either. I just don't know how to use it. And I'm fairly tech savvy. Or... or <laughs> um, it's just it's just not nice. a subscription I don't know about. Yeah. That's why I can't see anything. But I yeah. actually downloaded that. Okay. Well, um, we have another person in the green room. I know she's anxious to come in. She's anxious to drink with us because we're gonna do a cheers. Uh her name is Jules. You guys all love her. We all know her. Bring her in. Hi, Jules. Hey, how's it going? 
Good. Welcome back. I know you've been like Good. traveling the world right now. Yep. Ha been, you want to do a uh, cheers Florida. first? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, absolutely. I didn't pour this for nothing. So. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching our podcast. Jules, Sarah, Salute. love you both. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, where were you? Where were you traveling? I went to Miami, Florida, and then Pompano Beach up by Fort Lauderdale. Okay. It was really nice. Yeah, you and you were only home for what, a, like a week or two weeks in between, and all of a sudden you went somewhere else. You were going all yeah. kinds of places. Right. I came back from Texas, was home for a little bit, and then I went to Florida. I'm home now for a few days, and then I'm going to be in Palm Springs for um, a Portuguese um, fraternal insurance organization for their convention. Come home for another week and a half, and then off to uh, Kentucky for three weeks. Um. Talking about a retired life, holy crap. I mean, yep. you could travel holy crap. wherever. You, you, you must have done something right in your working ability to be able to travel so well on your retired time. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm actually kind of more lucky than I am smart, but I'm pretty smart. I'm just more lucky. Nice. I like it. Um, have you been watching the Olympics? Absolutely. Uh, you know what? It, that, it was... It was my mom's favorite thing to do. And yeah. so as a little kid, that's what we did every two years. Winter, summer, winter, summer. Right. You know, so it's bred in me. And um, as far as pot, I don't have cable. I cut the cable. Yeah. So USA um, app, USA channel, right? You can watch it on, yeah. on that. Um, yeah. I, also, I believe Peacock has it. And okay. NBC app because I have a Roku, so that's how I watch all my stuff. And then yeah. the Roku, they also have a an Olympic channel as well. Yeah, we have we have Fire Stick, and we use the Fire Stick a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know about the USA channel. I think Sarah, I think we talked about that one at the beginning. So you know, for people, I just don't think they they publicized it very well that you know you didn't have to have cable to watch the Olympics, but everything was forced and and went mm -hmm. really quick. So let, let's just jump into that first so we can start talking about how we feel about stuff. So um, last week I put out a, and I'm going to be reading stuff off my phone, so I'm sorry if I'm looking down, everybody. Um, we put out a poll and I asked um, a couple different pages how they felt about the Olympics this year, right? So I asked, I said, with the Olympics still airing on Wednesday, oh wait, that was my cancellation of last week, sorry. Do you think the Olympics should have taken place in Japan with the growing numbers of COVID with the city on lockdown and no spectators? And I had some really interesting answers. A lot of people responded. And what do you think? Just between the two of you really quick. What do you think the percentage is? Do you think the percentage of yes was higher or do you think the percentage of no? And I'll read the question one more no. time. Do you think the Olympics should have taken place in Japan with the growing number of COVID? What do you think is higher? I think no, the no was higher. Yeah, I, I would think the no's were higher as well. Okay, so you think no was higher? Well, both of you are right. Yeah. I mean, so the poll went, and I have some comments from some people that we'll put on there. 17% said yes, which I was actually kind of shocked that it was that was that high. I actually thought no would be a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And 83% was no. So 83% wow. of the people really thought that, they, that we shouldn't have had the Olympics this year. Um, with that said, some of the comments that I had, Sarah, as as you know, I mean, I'll, I'll read yours too. And you saw that um, Judy said hi. Stacy's on. Hi, Stacy, baby cakes. Uh, Stacy says no. And well, you're part of the majority because 83% people said no. Mm -hmm. So um, I was a little shocked because I, I had a lot of people talk to me today about yes. So uh, Sarah said, as much as I enjoy watching the Olympics, I personally think it was too soon. Um, Socorro, who I, I work with, she said, there's too big of a risk still. I love watching the Olympics, but it's not worth getting sick. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. Um, I have a couple other comments here. Let's see what other people said. Like I said, it's hard because I'm reading this on my phone. I'm really sorry about that. If you guys want to comment, go right ahead. Um, Jules, you had said without spectators, without spectators or the athletes, families and attendants, what's the freaking king point? Exactly. I agree. I think, I think, part, and I'll, I'll give my answer in a second. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to jump ahead. Um, 
Janice, who's in the room, just said, she said, yes, the athletes have trained for this opportunity for many years. It is up to the individual as to whether they want to compete or not. So there you go. We have a couple yeses and a couple noes. I, unfortunately, am right in the middle because I have to put myself either in an athlete's position or I have to put myself into Mm -hmm. the health of that athlete. So none of us know what it's like to be an Olympic athlete and to train for four years, yeah. five years, six years, whatever it is out of college, become the best in the, you know, in the U S and then not be able to go. Um, mm-hmm. But then you've got the guys that are going and you're taking a chance of getting yourself sick, your teammates sick, your coaches sick, bringing it home to your, your family. Um, you know, all of that. So do either one of you want Stacy? So cute. do either one of you want to change your answer after thinking about the poll no. 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 Mm-hmm. So both no. of you no. they, it shouldn't have happened. It just shouldn't have happened. None of us should have gone. Yeah, I mean, so many people are I, dealing with with the repercussions of COVID that I mean we all have to roll with it, right? So why put yourself or anybody else in danger? But what if this person I mean, and then we talk about age and stuff and we'll, we'll talk about what the statistics are also of who's caught COVID and who hasn't since they've been there. What about the statistics? You know, these guys are, are coming of age and this is their one chance to get a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal to represent their country, to do all of that. This is their one chance. They know they're done afterward. Well, I mean, do you really think they're going to say no for this opportunity? Of course not. But the thing is, is that it's, it's a safety Thing. We're, we're spiking again, even here in California. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, it's not just here that we're spiking. It's all over right. the world. And Jules, knowing that that Japan is on lockdown and that their numbers and stuff are soaring, do you still think that the athletes should have taken that into consideration? Or do you still think that the drive to get a gold medal is way more important than them taking a chance of getting COVID? Well, they took the chance because they wanted to. Um, and in two years, who knows what's going to happen, even if they wait another year. Um, I'm just as disappointed that their families didn't go. Uh, we all know how we can social distance, uh, mask up. There's there's ways to prevent it. Um, I'm not opposed to them being there. I'm just opposed to the fact that they don't have an, uh, um, their families there. I understand not having an audience there, having people come and go. But to be able to... Um, have your mom or your dad there or your or your wife or your husband, your kids to see you as an Olympic gold medalist, yeah. you know, is, is something that you're taking away from these people. This is everything to a lot of people. I mean, it, uh, I've seen some of these people actually. Hi, Tony. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Um, I, I've seen a lot of these very humble, you know, and I'm going to say young kids because all of them are younger than me. Um, these young kids how they have reacted when they've gotten a medal, how this will change their life. And we'll go into pricing. I didn't know if you guys know this, but for every gold medal, you get a certain amount of money for every silver you do too. And so does a bronze. So yeah, I mean, I didn't really know. I kind of thought maybe there was something, but no, there's a dollar amount attached Mm -hmm. to that. And some of these people that are in some, you know, maybe lower income families, this, this could really change their life. So with that said, as of Wednesday, Last week, the total number of Olympic-related COVID cases, okay, so Olympic-related, this has nothing to do with what's going on um, in Japan, let's say. Um, COVID cases are 193 people, including 20 athletes. So that means coaches, people working the line, um, probably the, the vendors, things like that. 193 people we added to the list just for two weeks, sending these people over for, for the Olympics um, and 20 athletes. So that, that, that kind of narrows it down a little bit and shows you that, you know, they are catching COVID while they're there. This is the problem. Now the, the, let me see if I have a number on this. I don't, but it just says the increase comes the same day government officials in Tokyo reported the highest number of daily cases in the capital since the pandemic began last year. And I think wow. I had something, I thought I wrote it down. I, I don't know why I didn't. It was like 3,000 something people in Tokyo in just the last couple days since the Olympics have been going on that the numbers are, are soaring. 
And even though they're on lockdown, even the government officials saying lockdown's not working. And these people are not gathering. They're not in the public places. And like Jules said, none of the people are actually like watching the, these these Olympians. I feel so bad. You watch these people and they're on, they use teams this year. If you notice, they actually use teams to connect to the family. Who's doing, is somebody doing dishes at somebody's house? Cause I can hear all the clanking. Sorry, <laughs> I have a roommate. Oh, got it. Yeah, I don't do dishes, so it's fine. Um, and <laughs> I'll mute. It's, oh, you're fine. And it's it's one of those things where, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I saying? Sorry, I was about the families dishes. and the COVID. And oh, yeah. These these young kids are getting these golds and these, these medals and nobody can be there. I mean, I would yeah. feel terrible if my mom and dad couldn't come. And this is my only time at the Olympics or hearing the crowds. Now, I know they've pumped in some sound. They've pumped in, you know, that and you, if you look at the the stands, they're colored, you know, seats, so it looks like people are there. But come on, there's nothing like you going through the finish line and everybody, you know, yelling and, and throwing mm -hmm. the American flags on the field for you to carry and run through the, you know, through the stuff. I feel bad, and and yeah. like I said, I see both sides of it. Um, but if I was a kid and this was the way that I was going to make my my future for my family and for me and be able to, you know, get endorsements. We'll talk about endorsements too, to get these endorsements for these athletes. Um, this is a big deal. I mean, Michael Phelps is making more than I think when he was doing his, his Olympics and all of his medals, he's made like $21 million Whoa. just from the endorsements, right? Has nothing to do with anything else but $21 million these companies are paying him to represent them because of his the way he does it. How are you going to tell a, a person from Compton or, or a lower income co you know place that guess what? You know, this isn't going to happen and you're not going to get that money. So yeah, that was my crazy. Wow. By the way. Um, couple other things, and I'll let you guys actually talk about this. I went ahead and got this Washington Post put out a poll. And like I said, I have to look at my phone. I'm really sorry for looking down, you guys. It's kind of rude. Um, oh, Simone Biles. We'll go into that one in a second. So this is what the Washington Post said. And tell me if you guys agree with this, okay? It said, the proper thing would have been to move everything back an additional year and have one two-year Olympic cycle so that Tokyo 2020 becomes Tokyo 2022 leaving Paris 2024 and LA 28 intact. This would reward older athletes, which we talked about, reward older athletes who waited two years to compete and ensure that the wonder kids of not missing out on their athletic primes between Rio 2016 and Paris 2024. Um, it said, okay, so first let me t talk about that. So Sarah, what do you, what do you think about them saying, you know, maybe we should have waited those years to give the young kids, you know, time and the older guys to go ahead and get their groove on for the Olympics and then move on. Think it would have worked. Oh, you're on mute, babe. That's okay. No, Sorry. Mm -hmm. It was dishes over here. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think that they should have been skipped this year and maybe done next year and we could have recycled every two years after that or the year after. I mean, we've got, we've got a pandemic going on and we need to take all that into consideration. Right. Having said that, I also understand that these athletes have worked very hard to be, be where they're at. Right. And, you know, yeah. I'm not going to change my opinion that I think they should have been postponed. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I feel like they also earned their right to be there. Do you know that some of the older ones uh, couldn't even like train for another year to make it to this one because some of them were kind of on that, that peak of mm -hmm. being just too old to compete versus, you know, waiting one year. Cause obviously we're supposed to have it last year and now they had to wait till this year. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't make the trials because they were just not good enough. Jules, what do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm okay with it being this year and having to postpone it. It, it like you said, it it hurt people. I know. I mean, I used to work down by the Olympic Training Center when I was a water plant operator. Um, my time was, you know, I drove by every single day. And um, in fact, I know somebody that um, is actually at the Olympics. Uh, she came to my daughter's wedding. She's uh, in rugby. And um, I saw how hard they, they um, practice and it's their life. They eat, drink, sleep, right. and live training. 
So, yeah. you know, God bless them for going and uh, it's the chance they took it. You know, go USA. Yeah, I, I agree. Go USA. I mean, they're doing great. Yeah. Sarah has the numbers on that too. So, but the IOC network heads and Japanese officials are focused on income. This is the, the last part of the Washington Post, by the way. And when they weighed those billions against the possibility of residents and athletes contracting COVID and much of the host country wishing they'd pick real life ethics over professional gain, humanity never stood a chance. So with all the billions wow. and millions of dollars, but think about it, Japan lost millions and billions of dollars. They didn't have any tourists. They didn't have any of the people, the vendors and all those guys trying to make money. Mm -hmm. None of that happened this year. So now the last comment is, was it worth it? It obviously wasn't worth it if you're not going to make any money with all that stuff. So um, that, that was, it was shocking when I did that, that little info today. Uh -huh. So um, why don't we talk about Simone Biles? Everybody else's. You guys want to talk about Simone yep. Biles? Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Stacy's got to go. Bye Stacy. See you buddy. Um, so I kind of did some research here and I had a hard time if, if everybody doesn't know, understand, uh, Simone Biles, you know, gold medalist, Rio, blah, 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 came in. She was the, the number one person that was going to make mm -hmm. gold for the team, individual, all that. She did her first run on, uh, was it the, not the pommel, what was it? The, hmm. the vault? The vault. Good job, baby, for not watching the Olympics. <laughs> you. Um, I read an article. She, yeah, and if you actually watch it, you can see what happened. She actually lost it. She called it what the spins, the spinsies yeah, or something. She got the spins. Yeah. If you watch the replay, you see that she actually lost where she was going to land and actually lost where mm -hmm. she was. She's obviously, you know, very uh, lucky that she hit the ground the way she hit it and only took a couple steps. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to, if you see the um, news people oh. and stuff talking to her afterward. She just didn't trust herself. She knew something was wrong and she backed out. So when I was looking for information today, I found a ton of support for her, just tons, you know, mental illness or mental, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just a ton of, I, I couldn't find very much, um, very much bad people against her until I came to an article. And so a majority of the world, I would say 90% support her decision um, Sarah's making her face because I know she knows it's coming. Um, there are some people out there that think Simone Biles should have um, stayed in for the country. So here is who is criticizing um, Simone Biles. And remember, I'm really reading this stuff. I, of course, you know, so thankful she didn't get hurt. I'm glad she pulled out because only she knows. And, you know, who, who says that, you know, mm -hmm. you miss up on the floor and you break your neck and who, who wants that, right? There's an uncanny similarity in the nature of criticism. Charlie Cook, Kirk, sorry, an American conservative activist and also the founder of Turning Point USA, hmm, has called the gymnast a selfish sociopath and a shame to this country. We are raising a generation. Oh. We are raising a generation of weak people like Simone Biles, Kirk said on his podcast, adding. Simone Biles just showed the rest of the nation that when things get tough, you shatter into a million pieces. This was also, I didn't, I didn't print out the other one. There was one from, if you know the newspaper um, articles from the guardian, um, a very, what would you say, Sarah, is that right wing? What is that? Um, um, socialist? I, I don't know who runs the guardian. I want to say communist, but that's probably not quite right. Um, I, <laughs> I, I was shocked because it, it was very hard to find this, but I actually Googled as hard as I could to find this stuff. Those people are thinking that she is a disgrace because she decided not to um, run down the runway of the vault and not fall on her neck and break her neck. Um, Jules, I got to hear, what do you think about um, Mr. Kirk and his uh, comments about Simone Biles? Well, you know what? I had two girls that uh, did gymnastics starting at the age of four and five all the way through high school. Um, I think he's full of baloney. I was being nice. I'm, I, he's full of shit. Um, <laughs> that was, I mean, <laughs> you know, 
really? You're going to say how somebody else feels? And she did the right thing um, because her mental health or physical health uh, is way more important than putting a gold medal around you and your teammates' necks. Uh, people get hurt all the time, um, push themselves. Um, you're, you're not helping the team if you go up there and you screw up um, and you hurt yourself, paralyze yourself. You're not doing anybody any good, especially yourself. So, you, you know, what? that guy's just full of shit. Right. And I think that obviously he probably does it for shock factor. Um, you know, I had to play bias today. Um, it with some people I talked to at work because to get some of their their um, ideas about this, and oh, Jenna says, bum, bum, bum. right one, Jules. Um, <laughs> I tried to play devil's advocate today and go, okay, so what about the team? She backed out on the team. Here it is. She's a she's a gold medalist, and she um, oh, she meant <laughs> <laughs> she, she meant right on. Um, and I said, what about the team? You know, they were going to get a gold, not guaranteed, but they're going to get gold because here's this gold medalist on here. And all of a sudden she like backs out right at the end and says, you guys got this. You guys go win. It's all up to you now. Mm -hmm. What about our teammates? You know, I, I was trying to still find a, not a negative, but trying to find the devil's advocate in all of this. And I still couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, she did what was right. She, I, I mean, mm -hmm. Sarah, do, am I, am I thinking wrong? Am I, am I digging too hard to try to find a negative about her backing out? First of all, comment on that guy, whatever what his name was, because I don't even care. You don't need to repeat it. He's disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, mental health issues is a real thing. It needs to be, um, you know, acknowledged. Yeah. Also, right. she's not doing something like, you know, skipping. Yeah. <laughs> she's doing something that could kill her. Right. If right. she's not in a physical, mental place to do it, the right thing to do is to back out right. gracefully, which she did, and her teammates should understand. I bet they do. Be, I think they understand because they know that if they were in the same spot and they went flying down the, the runway and, and fell or whatever because they weren't there, um, that's just the smartest thing to do. Now, mm -hmm. I, I also brought up against um, – um, 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 oh – the coaches and stuff like that. Do you think she let down all the coaches that spent all of this time and all of this money and getting her healthy and, and, and going to the Olympics and all that. And all of a sudden she goes, no, nah, I don't want to. She didn't let anybody down. Okay. She probably feels like she did because she's as from yeah. everything I've seen is a good person. She right. didn't let anybody down. She is, it is okay to have, she had physically, issues when she was landing yeah like, right i didn't see the video personally but i have been told like her eyes like went the I wrong direction right yeah and my mom did see, too Hi, mom. you can see um, her and i'm sorry she, you can see her eyes uh, she lost it in the air she really lost it and yeah, so she mm -hmm. was afraid when she mm -hmm. came off the cameras actually caught her saying i don't trust myself because she obviously, if you lose trust and you question it and you do something, like you said, so I don't think she was letting anybody else down. Nope. I think she was letting herself down. But wouldn't you, if you were an athlete and all of a sudden you went all I that way to be with the team? Exactly. Yeah. So um, that was the only negative one I found, by the way. And then let's talk about this. Um, we we're talking about the money, you know, the the issues with that. So an Olympian. I, and I didn't know this. Olympian earns thirty-seven thousand dollars, thirty-seven five hundred for each gold medal. I was like, "Wow!" I mean, that's, wow. that's cool. that could pay for your training and you know all the stuff to get you there, right? Because you obviously had trainers and facilities and all of that. Twenty-two thousand five hundred for a silver, and fifteen thousand for a bronze. And for teams, they split it. So. I don't know if she, I, I couldn't find she gets anything for that team silver because technically mm -hmm. she was a team, but she backed out and that other fourth person came in. Mm -hmm. So, but if she was part of that team um, for the silver, she would have got a fourth of that amount. So the team gets that much. Um, I want to know, do you guys think if she was part of the team, but she backed out and then the other person went in, should she still get part of that money? Yes. What do you think? And why is that, Jules? Tell me. Uh, because you got you, you. Okay, so there's a, there's a team. So there's there's let's say there's seven of these people that go in. Okay, because they have to have all alternates. Because 
people do get hurt. So the person that's sitting down that didn't even get to compete, that's going to be part of the team. And they still get their cut. So yeah. if she's, whether she's competing or not, she still gets part of the cut. Right. That's just what I feel about, you know. And, okay, let's hear what Sarah has to say just to make sure before I, I put my opinion in there. Yeah, I, I agree with Jules. I think that you're part of a team. You get a cut. It, this is not. It is not like she backed up. She, she had got scared or whatever. She, that, that kid is amazing. Yeah, you know, right. she totally. They all deserve to split it equally. Right, and because I think would have been somebody different that backed up. Oh, and I agree. I think that mm -hmm. um, because I don't have the information, and I, I kind of looked for it, and I couldn't find it. I don't know if that means they split it between five now and because obviously there was four on the team and there's an alternate. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but also um, split between the five. There was a point I was going to make about, Oh, now I can't remember. I'm losing it today. I don't know what it is. Maybe I, I only had one drink. I have no idea. Um, losing the it's money the and all that. So yeah, it is the heat. I turned off my air conditioning so it wouldn't be so loud for you guys either. Um, so yeah, splitting the money will she lose the money, that kind of stuff. I think that maybe you got to remember they qualified, you know, for the the gold and mm -hmm. for the the medal stuff because of qualification, she was part of that qualification. So she helped them get there, right? So I still mm -hmm. think there should be some money right. because obviously, yeah, she got those points to get them there. Yeah, Sarah, go ahead. You have to raise your hand. I just didn't want to interrupt rudely. Oh, you can interrupt um, me. I'm just the host. Sorry. Okay. I think that um, even alternate, <laughs> I think it should have been split five ways. Even if the, if the alternate hadn't, mm -hmm. they right. were there. Oh, you know that the alternate mm -hmm. did. If right. You know they yes. have money. You know that there's something coming to that alternate because they wouldn't have mm -hmm. traveled that far. I mean, obviously they, they, they're there right. for a reason. They have to stand by the side in case somebody gets hurt. Well, what do you know? She doesn't there. Now they put that person there. Right. So, um, right. Um, so besides that, I think I have a one more thing. Oh, uh, Sarah, why don't you give us the metal count? Wasn't there, there was, Sarah had the metal count. I wanted to bring everybody up because we're about, we only have like, what, three more days? Isn't closing ceremonies? I think Sunday, Jules? I think, yeah, yeah, the eighth, I believe. The Sunday. The last day so the Sarah has our updated metal count. I had my flag at work and I don't have my flag here, but, um, it's so Sarah, tell me what So I will be looking at paper. Um, <laughs> it was also three pages. Wow. So there are 79 country, almost the states, countries on here. Wow. Um, I'll just name the first few. Okay. Um, Japan's in first place with 32 gold, 22 silver, and 16 bronze. Wait, 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 wait. I thought I saw it yesterday that we were in the lead. So wait, what is it again? How many golds? 32. Wow. And okay, so they, they, they came. Wow, they came up. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought it was really shocking. Okay, tell me again. Um, they are second, and it, from my understanding, what I found was up to date. So okay, and good. we came in second with 25 gold, 31 silver, and 23 bronze. Do you have the total amount, like for for like for you said China or Japan was in first? I'm sorry. So China has a total of 70 medals. We have a total of 79, but we don't have as many gold. Got it. Okay. So we have more, more medals, but not as many golds. Okay. Right. Got you. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry. And then Japan is in first place. I mean, third place. Wow. Yeah. Um, Japan's in third place with 21 gold, seven silver and 12 bronze, totaling 40 medals. Wow. They have the but most Monica medals. Britain's in fourth with 48 medals total, which is eight more than third place. But they have only 15 gold, gold, 18 silver, 15 bronze. Well, good on them for having, you know, silvers and, and bronzes. I mean, you know, at least they're winning yeah. a whole bunch. And so you said how many countries were on there? 79. So who's the last? Um, it's, it's actually kind of a tie when I'm looking at it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven countries with one bronze oh with one bronze okay so 79 has all the countries are at 79 because they're all yeah right so there's more than 79 i didn't realize they numbered them if they were tied the same so number. is there is there a country out there that only has one gold and nothing else one gold and nothing else thailand 
has Yay, one gold. Yay, Thailand! How awesome is that? They go back to their country like we got one gold, just one oh. gold. As well as Puerto Rico, Morocco, Bermuda. Wow. Yeah, in Bermuda. That's pretty impressive. If you think about it, you know, countries that aren't going to get golds and a lot of other stuff are actually bringing home a gold. I think I watched uh -huh. some of the wrestling, um, some of the other stuff. There was one country, and mm -hmm. don't, don't quote me because it's a couple days ago, they've never won a medal ever and they got a gold in something. I mean, how, how to represent your yeah. country and come home and just be like, you know, love me. I, I, I want us a gold. I'm finally, we're finally on the books. I think the Philippines had something like that, that they won a, an event and it was like their first ever. Um, that, that's just amazing. So I think that's killer. Um, let's talk about one more thing. I mean, we're at almost 40 minutes. I think this is good. Um, let's talk about the Norwegian um, female beach. Let's see. Let's see. Female beach handball team. So have you guys heard about this? So um, they actually showed up for yeah. their, yeah, they showed up for their event, not wearing their approved um uniforms for the 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 game they bikinis. decided to wear shorts instead of the bikinis and i have like a first hand thing on this is just ri ridiculous um because they went against the um uniform with the let's see european okay let me find out their names because i don't want to say it wrong um norwegian team s is a comment blah 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 blah, blah european i'll just read this really quick um Let's see. So I don't know if you guys know that this pink is actually going to pay their fines. So they were fined for wearing shorts That's instead cool. of bikinis. Pink step, stepped up and said, screw you. This is like the first sexist thing that we get to, you know, go ahead and, and handle for the Olympics. I'm going to pay all of your fines. It, everything's going to be fine. So here's the story. Popstar Pink offered to pay a fine issued against the Norwegian female beach handball team after the team wore shorts instead of bikini bottoms at a recent competition. After the comment, the European Handball Federation issued a statement saying it donated the amount of 15 euro, which is actually about $1,700, to the major inspiration or let's see, major international. Oh my glasses up! Major International Sports Foundation with support to equality for women, girls, and sports. Awesome! So now all that money went um, went over to them. My mom loves pink. I love pink. Everybody knows I always I try to get pink. my hair like pink. We all love pink. So there you go. Um, and then let's see. Um, Okay. Okay. The Norwegian team asked the EHF ahead of the championships for permission to wear the shorts. However, the team was told that breaking the uniform rules would be punishable by fines. So here it is. You're on the stage of everybody and your team, you know, sits down, talks to each other and says, we're going to break the rules. We don't give a crap about any kind of fines. We don't give any mm -hmm. of that. We're not wearing this outfit that they want us to wear. The EF, uh, EHF acknowledges the position of the players involved and further steps towards change in close, co in close coordination with the International Handball Federation have been are in motion. So it says that um, this is where their comment. The Federation says we are very much aware of the attention the topic has, re has received over the past days. And while change cannot happen overnight, we are fully committed that something good comes out of the situation right now. Screw you. I don't want to wear a bikini going up my butt. Now, I, I brought this up at, w at work today. I don't know if any of you watch the girls' um, beach volleyball. Yes, Year, I years have. and years. Right, Jules. Everybody knows guys love watching the girls' volleyball, beach volleyball. Why? They're wearing bikinis, okay? Absolutely. I mean, That's why I watch it. Exactly. I was just going to say girls and guys. I didn't mean to say just guys. Um, that's, been, that's been a thing for years and years and years. Yeah. Everybody watches it because of the outfits, not just because. Don't get me wrong and don't send me right, freaking emails right. saying that I said this this way. I'm just saying that was the guy's sports to watch with women because they were hot uh, beach volleyball players in bikinis, Correct. jumping around, bending over. I have to tell you, I was actually embarrassed the other day. I watched the Canadian, and I don't know who the other team was. And they were playing beach volleyball, and I wanted to see how it was going. The camera was right here, right? The Canadian team was here, and the camera was kind of like viewing over to watch the girls, you know, uh, surf from the other side. This one girl on the Canadian team had her bikini pulled up like a G-string in her, in her butt. Okay, maybe it's comfortable for you, right? 
the camera was like like this close like this was her <laughs> butt and the the g-string was going up we saw the folds of her butt we saw where the g-string was going and i sat there and i couldn't believe they did not move the i want to say it i almost stopped i had to stop myself the freaking camera and it was just aimed right out at if any little kid would have walked in, if any, you know, actually adults would have probably been embarrassed. I think if my dad walked in and my mom was watching, my dad would be like, well, I'm walking in the other room. It was that embarrassing. And so for a team to say, I want to wear wow. shorts and you find them, who the frick are you? Are you thinking it's bringing ratings because the guys are wearing uh, or the girls are wearing, you know, the G strings or whatever they're wearing. I mean, if guys were wearing speedos and they were up on top about to, to um, dive and the camera was zooming in on their package and their balls hanging out the back and all that stuff, you really think it would have gotten the same attention as this? I mean, no. this is what drives me crazy because I hated watching that game last night. I turned it off because I didn't want her ass in my face. So, Oh, I'm heated. Wow. Um, Jules, <laughs> how do you feel about that? How do you feel first about Pink? Obviously, we love her to death, and she's awesome. But how do you think? I, I, I mean, if uh, just tell me, because I need to catch my breath. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'm uh, if the Norwegian felt uncomfortable with wearing what they were wearing, the there should have been an option. It shouldn't be you have to wear this, okay? Because I mean, you can see the guys and they're, they're they're in the pool. They can wear speedos or they can wear trunks. I haven't seen any of them have to all wear speedos, as far as I recall. Right. You know? And and so that's 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 sexist. That that's mean and that's bullshit. Okay. I um, one hundred percent agree. Okay. I, and I think so it's now, go ahead. No, go ahead. But, I'm sorry. Okay. So, so now, um, you know, on the other hand, that camera guy should be fired. Okay. Has I some know. class. I mean, seriously, have some class. I tried to get up fast enough to take a picture with my phone just to do it. But you know what's funny is I have a work phone and I didn't want that picture and that picture on my phone because it would have been gross and sexist and almost a naked picture. I mean, it, it's almost like how tack, how tactless that was for him mm -hmm. to just keep the camera there knowing that she had brought those you know shorts. And here's my thing. If you want to wear those, I get it. But the cameraman has a right, not a right, should just have an obligation. I mean, we can't yes. show naked people, right? We can't show naked people on, on TV. Europeans can have naked boobs and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, oh, sorry, Sarah, do you need me to take you off? Is that why you're making that face? Oh, okay. So I, I just think there should be some kind of, yeah, mom says, well, uh, why bikinis and not shorts? Well, here's the thing. I have a feeling that some of them want to wear the bikinis because it's comfortable to move and it's comfortable to, you know, maybe go into the, the sand or whatever. Like Jules said, you should have an option. So for the Olympic mm -hmm. committee, you should be able to say, here's our groups of clothing, which, you know, they all have tons of them because if you look at what they do mm -hmm. on the, the podium, what they do when they're running, whatever. Right that these are our approved out, outfits and you can go ahead and wear anything you want. But if you're that cameraman and you're looking up that girl's ass, I mean, I think that's the, that's CBS, NBC, whatever. I think it's their responsibility to not have that being shown. I don't, yep. I don't, I don't, I guess yep. I just don't get it. You know, you know, Sarah? if it was men uh huh, and they were required to wear speedos and they wore regular shorts instead, they would not have been fine. And that's, Absolutely. and that's exactly. And here's the thing is, and I don't want that cameraman zooming in on the guy on top of the diving board and nope. showing my kids or my nieces or my nephews, what a guy's package looks like in a speedo. It's, it's I choose not to go to beaches that have men walking around in speedos because it's a little, it's a little close to comfort for me. I also am very tactful when it comes to women. I don't want my girlfriend, my friends walking around with a bikini that only covers your nipples and then has the G string going in the front and might only cover a couple lips. You know what I mean? I, I think that there's, there's a tack for that. There's, 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 
it's just not something that I need to see in public. And I don't care. I don't care if you're a lesbian, you're a straight person, you're married, you're not married, you're mm -hmm. a swinger. I don't give a crap. I just don't need to see that kind of stuff. There's parts of bodies that don't need to be seen. I love men. I love women. I love seeing, you know, how, how beautiful they are, but I don't need to see wow. all your parts. I just don't. So, um, Sarah, my mom yeah. says word. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let me let me let me let me interrupt you for a second. Let me tell Please. you, there's a couple of things that I I saw uh, while watching the Olympics that I never watched that I was okay. really impressed with. Um, I really liked um, to watch some um, fencing. They did. Yeah. I watched the women's um, team fencing, which I never thought. I mean, I thought it was like kind of boring. I watched it and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I got the yeah. whole more about it, and I was like, that is way cool. Um, I do not like watching women women boxing. For me, that's a turnoff. I, I, I mean, they didn't want to beat the hell out of each other and knock their brains loose. Fine. I don't like seeing women do that. That for then me. you don't like me. You don't want to come over for my NFC, my my um my uh, my fights. I like watching the UFC. Sorry, Kate. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I go in the other room. Yeah, I liked it. I like watching the dudes beat the hell out of each other. I just, it, I mean, and I've watched the fights. I've watched the women fight. It's just, it, it, it like almost hurts me to watch them get punched. It's like, yeah. oh my God, that's a woman. You know? It's like, you're such a beautiful yeah. face. Why do you do that? Yes. I love it. It's, it's I like, watch it for oh. sport. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. Just, uh. And the other thing yeah. that I really enjoyed watching was the, and I'm not a basketball fan at all, but watching the, um, What's that? The pickup games, the three on three. That oh, yeah. was way cool. I really like that. That was that was interesting because it went so quick. Like mm -hmm. there was a, a score, and then you went and you went. There was a score, and and it yeah. went like this. I I didn't like it as much, but you know what's funny is you say that the things that I liked watching. I love watching handball. I love watching. You know, well we call it ping pong. You know what I mean? I love watching China and ping pong because the two go hand in Whoa. hand. And watching those guys just go at it. I mean, I, I want to get a ping pong table just to go like this and be able to go, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and score. Um, Sarah probably hasn't watched it, so she doesn't know what the hell we're talking about. Um, but then also the thing, like you said, I had never watched women's wrestling. And to watch, I think there was a, a young teenager. Yeah, I, and I wish I would have printed it out. A young teenager, um, an African-American girl that it was like yes. the best thing that's ever. Yeah, I did. I mean, are you kidding me? That's like the Phenomenal. story of the United States. And I watched the wrestling and I found that fascinating. It's like there's certain certain sports. I watched archery. I watched the triathlon was really cool. The swimming in the the they said the water in Japan was so hot in the in the river or the ocean, wherever part they I don't know what part of it. Uh -huh. Sorry, I don't know way around Japan. But they said you would think the runners would want to jump in the water to cool them off before they went to get on the bike and stuff. They said they hated it because they wa they jumped in and it was like bath water, yeah. you know? And it's like, if that's not cooling you off, then... So long story short, it was it, it's still amazing. We have a couple more days. Mm -hmm. If you want to feel good about this country, which we all, I think, <laughs> need to get there, um, you know, with everything going on, this new COVID strain that's, you know, people are all like, should I get a COVID shot? Should I not? People are in the hospital, you know, with COVID shots and they're catching this strain, you know, all this. If you want to feel good about America right now, watch the freaking Olympics. Um, yes. We have, we have people winning. We have people losing. We have people that, you know, are, are, you think they're going to, they're going to be the ones that win all the golds and all that. And they're winning silvers because another country came out of nowhere and has the runner faster than our number one runners or the swimmers or the divers and all of this. If you want to feel good and feel part of what's going on in the world, watch this and, and just enjoy the sport between countries. It's, it's, it, for some reason it brought me happier with, with what's going on in the world because it just was like, let's just shut up for a freaking minute and let's, you know, let's watch these people do what they want to do, represent our country, kind of like the way I feel about the military. You know, you're representing this country and you're getting paid this freaking much mm -hmm. for it. And, you know, they're doing it because, you know, they, they want to, you know what I mean? And these people in the Olympics, this is yeah. what they've been training for and they get to go and represent the United States. And I just think it's, like I said, I wish I had flags all over my house at the moment because I think it's just exciting. Um, Janice says... 
I've always loved the swimming, ping pong, pole vaulting, and gymnastics. Yeah, the, the pole vaulting. I forgot about that. They did that um, today. I watched some of that. And the gymnastics, of course. You know, the men need to step up to the plate, though. Our, our gymnastics aren't doing the yeah. greatest right now for men. Uh, Jamar's in the house. Hey, buddy. Sports and music bring the world together the best. I agree. I mean, it's like just watching these people stand up there. I don't know how some of them aren't crying, by the way, when they're doing the, the, the anthem. Because the minute that airs, I cry. All the time. I mean, the person standing up there, and I'm just like, "Oh my god, he did so a great job!" And there's our American flag raising and all this, and I get totally emotional. And Guilty like, for that. You what? You yeah, I you for that. I know, baby cakes. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good feeling. It's not. It's not mm -hmm. a negative feeling. You know, it's it's just a good, good feeling. What the heck is Janice drinking? U S U U S U U S. The last one. Something with a Y. <laughs> I mean, cheers to Janice, everybody. I mean, if you're oh, I see well, flags. So I, I see an American flag five times, and then another flag. You're oh, kidding. Her. She just sent more flags. So I see American flags. Jules, do you see flags, or do you yeah, see I the word too. US, US, US? Um, it looks like American flags. Yeah, <laughs> I see flags also. I should take a picture, you guys. All I see are the are the letters, and that's it. What are the that last two cool. letters on the first one? Because I don't know what the flag is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you guys are funny. That. Um, okay, here's the topic. Here's something. Yeah. What about the women's soccer team? Ooh, they Ooh, lost. Hot topic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, here's that goes back to us saying about the Olympics, how you know everybody thought the gymnastics were gonna, or the the Olympics, <laughs> the gymnasts were gonna win gold, because that's what they've always done, right? Uh -huh. Well, I just said, isn't it awesome to see these countries stepping up to the plate? And yep. the the women's soccer team is supposed to be unbeatable. You know, they're they're supposed to be the best, and they are. Don't get me wrong, they're they're wonderful. But guess what? Not every day are you wonderful. I mean, you're not every day are you going to feel great. Yeah. And so you make a you make a miss on the goal and they make a goal. Guess what? They played they outplayed you. You yeah. you deserve to lose if you if you didn't cook or kick the goal. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, there's been some surprises. I think the men's basketball lost their very first game and everybody went, What the hell? Yep. You know, we're known for our basketball. Yep. And then I think they're now they're in the semifinals or something like that. So yes, yeah. I think that, that the the news coming out of this is actually positive um even though we're in second right sarah you said yeah we're in second with a total of 79 medals right so i think we're in track and field right now i think that that's really yes. kind of where we're at um and you know we we do we do really well i was gonna say do do huh. we do do really we well do do. um in in uh track and field and it's exciting to see the javelin and the the shot put and all that stuff so you know, we have a chance to to win more more golds, and I I all the power to you, United States. I mean, hello, I, I think it's awesome. So, I want to thank both of you, um, Sarah. Thank you for coming on. I know you hate this, but you're going to be on more and more. Um, yeah. Jules, thank you for staying in town and actually being a part of this. We're going to get drinks. I I have not forgotten. Um, now that I yeah. don't work from home, I'm at work, you know, Monday through Friday and, and, uh, even coming home and doing jumping on this and making sure I look halfway decent and grabbing something to eat, um, before I jump on is uh, a little rough at the moment, but, um, you know, I got, I, I got good health right now. Uh, Sarah's doing great. Excellent. Um, so we're, we're excited to take you out for a drink and, uh, everybody else, if you guys yeah, have I'll any comments, or, I'll come up your yeah. way. Heck yeah. Come up here. Uh, if anybody has any comments or, or want to say anything, you know, please, um, you know, you can leave it after the show even because we, we still get those. Um, or you can go to, I think we're using Sarah's right now, Sarah at PonderingMikes.com. Leave us any kind of emails you guys want to leave. Um, if you have a show idea, um, hit that like button, that smash button. This is going to be on YouTube later on tonight. So if you want to go there and add some likes to that, that'd be great. Um, we're still in the works of our webpage, right, Sarah, and our... Mm -hmm. YouTube page. So we're going to go ahead and break away a little bit and have some, you know, some good content. We'll even have some stickers and shirts and some stuff maybe. So we'll see what happens, but we're in the loop. Yeah. And we'll have Jules on more because we love her commentary. Excellent. I love, I love all you. of you. Thank you so much for being on. You guys can stay here. I'm going to end the live stream and uh, thanks everybody. Bye everybody. Go USA. Go USA. Come on USA. You